My name is Zijian Wang. I work as the Climate Action Lead at Signify. I have been working in the field of sustainability for almost 10 years. Today, I'm very excited to talk about the concept of decarbonization. Decarbonization has become such a buzzword in social media and in workplace. There has been some confusion and misconceptions around it. So today, I'm going to try to explain what decarbonization is and why it's important in three different levels of complexity. And hopefully by the end of the conversation, you will be able to have some ideas on how to find your own decarbonization pathway. Hi. 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 So today we're going to talk about something called decarbonization. Do you know what that is? Nope. It's OK. We're going to get there. Um, but in order to talk about decarbonization, we need to talk about climate change and global warming. So just like you and I, we're wearing layers of clothes right now. And yeah. our planet Earth is wearing clothes too. But instead of fabric like this, um, our Earth's clothes are made of greenhouse gases. Gases, yeah, yes. I've heard of that. So greenhouse gases trap heat and keep the planet warm. And one of the most commonly seen greenhouse gases is called carbon dioxide or CO2. Yeah. Have you heard about CO2? Yep. We yeah. breathe it out, but we breathe oxygen in. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's the CO2 we're talking about today. And we've been sitting here for one minute, and apparently I'm not dressing appropriately to the summer weather, and I'm getting too warm. Shall I take off some of my thick jacket? Yeah. Yes, let me do that. Wow. I feel so much better. I'm not sweating anymore. So just like what I did when I get too warm, I try to get rid of some of the thick clothes. And for our planet Earth, we are trying to do the same thing for it because there is too much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So that basically means we're making the Earth wearing um, too many layers of clothes. OK? Yeah. Have you learned something about decarbonization? Can you tell me? in your own words, what is decarbonization? So basically I've learned it's kind of climate. Mm -hmm. It's about climate. Mm -hmm. So it's something called CO2 or carbon dioxide. And mm -hmm. then if we breathe too much out of it, then mm -hmm. the, the Earth planet will gets be too warm. Yeah, it will yeah. be too, getting too warm mm -hmm. and get sick like us humans. Yeah. And we don't want that. Okay, yeah. I've learned a lot. Thank you. Hello. So today we're going to talk about a very interesting topic called decarbonization. Have you heard about decarbonization? I've heard quite about it a lot from university and also from back home, Indonesia, but I'm not really sure what it means. So decarbonization, simply put, is to reduce CO2 emissions from mm -hmm. the atmosphere uh, in order to limit global warming and fight climate change because CO2 or carbon dioxide is one of the most mm -hmm. commonly seen greenhouse gases. That sounds important. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So decarbonization is very important and relevant for everybody because we're all experiencing the impact of climate change, such as the heat wave in mm -hmm. the past few years. So no matter who you are, no matter where you are, you are we're all feeling it. We're all in this together. If you look at the history of Earth's temperature, uh, the Earth's temperature has already increased by more than one degree Celsius compared mm -hmm. to the pre-industrial levels, and it's not cooling down anytime soon. And do you know that by every 0.1 degree Celsius warming compared to the current level, about 140 million more people will be exposed to dangerous heat. Oh, I didn't know that. That's so sad. So there's definitely an urgency and necessity here in terms of limiting global warming. And in response to that, countries have come together and signed the well-known Paris Agreement. Uh, luckily for mm -hmm. us, there's still time, but we really need to take action now and decarbonize our society and economy. And when we think about uh, how are we going to do that, I look at you as a university student, you hold the key mm -hmm. to innovation and technology. Have you heard about any specific uh, technological examples uh, uh, in terms of decarbonization? Yeah, a few examples that come to my mind is like perhaps solar panels and also buying sustainable food. Yeah, those are really uh, fascinating uh, examples. Mm -hmm. um, and today I would like to uh, land on something that is very approachable, but very impactful. 
So here you see that we have three lamps in front of us. They are actually made of three uh, different generations of lighting technology. In terms of functionality, they provide exact the same amount of light, but in terms of the amount of energy they consume, uh, CO2 related to their use phase, it's very, very different. And mm -hmm. can you look at them and take a guess which one of these uh, would lead to the highest level of CO2 emission during use? Um, I would take a guess of this one, maybe. Yeah, so that's a very close guess, um, but this is not the uh, least energy efficient. So this is a fluorescent bulb. Here, what we have is a incandescent bulb. Mm -hmm. This is um, a very old and one of the first bulbs invented in the world. Mm -hmm. um, this one is a 60 watt bulb. And this one here, the fluorescent bulb, um, is better than this one. This mm -hmm. one is 15 watt. And if you look at this one here, this is actually uh, coming from one of the most recent technology, mm -hmm. LED technology. This one is only 6 watt. Oh, that's quite a difference. Yeah, it's quite mm -hmm. a difference. And when you think about them, when we use them to light up our space, uh, the one with LED technology mm -hmm. um, is the most energy efficient, would lead to the lowest level of CO2 emission. And comparing to this one, the fluorescent bulb would end up with 2.5 times CO2 as the LED bulb. Okay. And what about this one? Yeah, and in terms of the incandescent bulb, mm -hmm. 10 times CO2 oh. emission compared to this one. Quite the difference again. Yeah, okay. so the magnitude of impact mm -hmm. is unimaginable. And here we're only talking about one bulb. Yeah. If we try to think about this problem at a larger scale for the entire city, entire country, then lighting technology, LED, is really a simple but very powerful way to decarbonize our economy. Yeah, I, I say it would make quite a difference by using this bulb. Yeah, that would be mm -hmm. it for today. And I hope by now uh, I've given you some food for thought in terms of um, how you think about decarbonization and sustainability. Thank you so much for the insight. Hello. Hi. Hi, today we're going to talk about a concept called decarbonization. Yeah. Have you heard about it? Yeah, I've definitely heard about it. I know that decarbonization is important for all of us to fight climate change and that we uh, need to reduce the consumption of uh, carbon that we uh, use as, an, uh, as a person, as companies, but also as society. And we think of decarbonization as one of the key strategies and solutions to help us create a more sustainable world to, uh, to minimize the impact of climate change. Can you tell me, are you thinking about how we can do as consumers, as individuals, to contribute to decarbonization? Yeah, of course, yeah. So I've been uh, focusing on this quite a lot at home and thinking about how can I reduce my own uh, carbon footprint. Um, so after reading a lot about it, I have uh, placed solar panels on my roof and I have switched to an electric vehicle to reduce my uh, consumption of, uh, of carbon. Some of the examples you mentioned are really good, uh, like solar panels switching to EVs. When we think about uh, consumer behaviors, what we can do to decarbonize our economy, uh, we can actually start with a very simple three R principles, reduce, reuse, and replace. Uh, so reduce, reduce energy consumption, uh, so we don't need to use as much, as, as much energy uh, to start with. Uh, reuse, that is to reuse products, whatever is possible, so we can um, eliminate waste. And replace, of course, uh, that is uh, replacing uh, carbon intensive technologies with low carbon technology mm -hmm. alternatives. So if we look at lighting technologies have actually evolved remarkably through the past century. Um, may I ask you what kind of lighting you have at home? Yeah, I have smart LED lighting across my whole uh, house and then listening to you, I think then I made the right uh, choice. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You have already made a more sustainable choice in terms of the lighting at home. Do you, yeah. and, and do you know how much energy you can save by using LED? Um, I think it's around 70, 80 uh, percent roughly. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a very good guess and actually very accurate. So by replacing um, conventional lighting yeah. technology with LED, we can save up to 80 uh, percent energy okay. consumption and oh, wow. therefore saving around 80 percent, uh, exactly, yeah. CO2 emissions. 
Um, and you also mentioned smart lighting yeah, systems. So yeah. I guess you can control, you can dim your lights. I can control it. I can turn it on. I can turn it off. If I leave the house and I see uh, on my app that the lights are still on, I can luckily turn them off because yeah, I, I really dislike leaving the lights on when I leave the house. So that's how I control it every day. Great. And do you know by adding connectivity to LED lighting, how much more energy can you save? Well, I believe it's around 10, 15 percent that I can save more energy uh, by controlling it. So by adding uh, smart control systems, yeah. you can save additional around 20 percent wow. of energy. Okay. And that's therefore, that's additional CO2 saving okay. along the way. That's good to know. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, we've uh, talked a lot about decarbonization today. Yeah, conversation. yeah. No, definitely. I've learned a lot. So thank you very much for your uh, explanation. And I know what I need to do next to even uh, reduce my carbon output even more. So thanks for, uh, for today. Yeah, great. Thank you. Thank you.